in the last stream, we finally managed to complete the last few quests here in chapter three. We got our first Garmon Bozia, and we began completing a couple of the quests at the beginning of chapter four. And we left off right before we got to this pure daisy here. Now, if memory serves me right, the reason that we stopped right before the pure daisy is because we lost our chorus fruit because I foolishly broke the end stone under the chorus fruit that we got from our end seed. And so what I've gone ahead and done between streams is I've gone and gotten another one of these vengeance essences here. I killed a few more uh, of the spirits. I broke quite a few blocks with the vengeance pickaxe, but I finally managed to get another one of the uh, vengeance essence. And so now it really shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think, for us to get another Garmon Bosia, which in turn is going to allow us to get yet another uh, end seed, which should give us an extra chorus flower. And this time, hopefully, uh, we're not going to mess that chorus flower up. And uh, we should hopefully uh, be able to get uh, the pure desi. So it turns out that I didn't need to get another vengeance essence here because you can actually make chorus flowers using mutation paste. So uh, if we just take some of the uh, pre existing mutation paste that we have in the system. Uh, right now we have one paste and one block, but you can craft one block into nine paste. We should then be able to craft up uh, four mutation paste with uh, basically one of any of the items shown on screen here. I don't think we're going to use nether wart simply because we only have the one nether wart. Instead, I think we'll probably go ahead and use something like a potato or a carrot because we have uh, a few thousand of, uh, of each of those. And that should get us two more, which we can then of course grow uh, into more chorus flowers and uh, hopefully have just a limitless supply of chorus flowers going forward. We could even if we wanted to uh, get like another two here with um, the remaining mutation paste, but I think that uh, two should be more than enough. So let's go put these down. I think for now we'll just do something like this and like this. Now, of course, what you can do here is you can put uh, cobblestone or any block, I guess, a few blocks above where the chorus route is going to be. And that's going to kind of encourage the chorus fruit to uh, to split, uh, thus getting us more of these chorus flowers, which thus going forward is going to allow us to get even more uh, chorus fruit. I think this is right. The cobblestone might have to, uh, have to be one block high, but I think this should work. So it should kind of like grow up one, and then when it gets here, it should split off into uh, into two more uh, chorus flowers and then continue to grow up from there. So this is working as intended. That one has just split into two. And uh, we could now, if we wanted to grab one of these and, uh, and replant it. For now, I'm going to leave it because we do want these uh, to get much, much taller. But uh, for the most part, I think we'll leave those to grow. And while we wait for those to grow, uh, we do need to set something else in motion here. Because if we're going to get ourselves a mana pool, which is the next quest on after the pure daisy, we need five living rock. The five living rock is made around the pure daisy with ancient mossy cobblestone. Now, uh, no recipe in JEI for Ancient Mossy Cobblestone. However, based on how everything else has worked with the uh, hourglasses of nostalgia, I'm going to assume that we have to take a regular old Minecraft moss stone and place that around the hourglasses to turn them into the Ancient Mossy Cobblestone. Now, to make the normal moss stone before we can make it ancient, uh, we have to get cobblestone and we have to get vines. Right now, we don't have vines. However, as luck would have it, uh, we can make vines using uh, any of the items shown here, as well as two mutation paste, which is not going to be too difficult. However, if we're going to want to get a lot of mutation paste, and I didn't mean to use the nether wart there, but that's fine, I guess. Um, if we're going to want to get a large amount of vines, we're probably going to want to start growing the vines that we have, as opposed to making a large number of them with the mutation paste. So I think for now, I'll probably just go ahead and like plant these vines down over here in the hopes that those kind of grow downwards and eventually we can shear those to get even more in the future. So someone in the Twitch chat has pointed out that we might be able to do like a really big jungle tree. And that really big jungle tree might just spawn with a bunch of vines on it. So if we just kind of shift around next to these guys. Yeah, that comes with a ton of vines, which is definitely a much easier way of getting vines than the way that I'm trying to do over there. But uh, for now, if we go ahead and grab our shears here, we should be able to uh, to get pretty much all of these fairly quickly. So once we have the, uh, the vines here, we should be good actually to make quite a bit of moss stone. 
So these here should slowly but surely start to transform into uh, into ancient mossy cobblestone, at which point we can come back and grab them and use them around our pure daisy. Over here, we are starting to get uh, some chorus flowers, which is good. And that kind of leads me into what I want to work on while we wait for our ancient cobblestone over there. And that is, I would like to look at a little bit of automation using integrated dynamics. Specifically, now that we have access to these chorus flowers, we also have access to the world block exporter and the world block importer. Both of these require a logic director, and both of these require these crystallized chorus chunks, which, as you can tell from the name, are made from chorus flowers, in this case, popped chorus fruit, which you, of course, get by smelting regular chorus fruit. So this does need to be done in a mechanical squeezer. And to get a mechanical squeezer, we are going to have to get a regular squeezer, one diamond, one obsidian, and then two energy batteries. These are pretty expensive, but definitely, uh, I think, very doable. Uh, they both require two blocks of crystallized mineral, uh, six crystallized mineral chunks, and one block of redstone. I did do a little bit of mineral farming between streams of the, uh, with the mineral saplings. However, I don't quite think we're there yet. We do have what it takes to make two blocks of mineral chunks, but not quite uh, the four required for those two batteries. Uh, we do also have what it takes to make another 23 crystallized mineral chunks there, which in turn should get us a few more blocks. And so now we're just missing the crystallized chunks required, which we should be able to get from just a couple extra saplings here. So a little bit of uh, mineral tree farming later, and I think we are pretty much good to go. Let me uh, quickly craft up two blocks of redstone. Let's also throw everything into our system here. And at that point, we can make two energy batteries. Perfect. And a squeezer is just missing a dark block. It does require nine dark gems, which is pretty pricey. However, we do have uh, more than enough dark gems for the job here, which is perfect. Uh, that should get us a regular squeezer. From there, we should already have uh, one diamond and one obsidian. And so if we put these batteries in the system, that should get us the mechanical squeezer. Nice. And for now, I was going to put this over here next to our starch extractor, although I kind of feel like we might as well put this down like here, maybe underneath the conductor mast. So you can take some of the 50 million redstone flux that we have backed up in here and, uh, and we can use that for our squeezer. So all we want to do here, I guess, is probably start by tearing down these uh, chorus flowers. We, of course, want to start by grabbing the actual flowers themselves. And then from there, we can just tear down the rest of the chorus plant. That's going to get us chorus fruit. From there, we want to smelt the chorus fruit into popped chorus fruit. And then we can use that in the squeezer to get these crystallized mineral chunks. You have a 100% chance of getting two and then a 50% chance or two 50% chances of getting two extra there. So you can get up to four uh, by the looks of it, but we'll start, of course, by just throwing those in here. So I will go ahead and replant both of those there to get some more chorus fruit, uh, should we need it. We could also plant the uh, other four that we have as well uh, in the future as well, should we need it. Uh, for now, I will cook a few more up in here, just in case we don't quite get enough uh, popped chorus fruit from these three, or uh, quite enough um, mineral chunks here, but we did. So from three popped chorus fruit, we got 11 crystallized chunks there, which means I think we got quite uh, lucky in the grand scheme of things, which is perfect. And so that should be uh, almost everything we need for uh, these logic directors. Nice. So the idea with the block exporter and the block importer, uh, these effectively act as a block placer and a block breaker, but they're highly customizable block breakers and block placers. So one of the first things I would like to automate using the block placer and the block breaker is ancient cobblestone. Right now, since the beginning of the series, um, between streams, I've been mining all the ancient cobblestone placing down a bunch of regular cobblestone, waiting for it to get turned into ancient cobblestone, and then mining it all back down again, and then using it to make the geodes. But I think we can automate the creation of ancient cobblestone fairly easily using the block placer. So both of these are fairly easy to make. They do both require a diamond pickaxe, which uh, thankfully uh, isn't too difficult. Uh, we do need, however, a little bit more in the way of uh, sticks, although we might have some uh, planks lying around. Now I think about it, we totally do. From there, these both require uh, either an item exporter or an item importer. Uh, both of these are made with an item interface and then uh, an input variable transformer or an output variable transformer. Yeah, those are both fairly easy for us to do. In fact, we might already have uh, what it takes to make both of those. We do, which is missing the output variable transformer, which in and of itself is just missing a piston here. Perfect. Uh, from there, we are just missing the logic director, which we have. So we put everything back in the system here. 
And that should be pretty much everything. So that gets us a world block importer and also a world block exporter. Nice. And we can, of course, make multiple of those uh, because we do still have more logic directors lying around should we need them. So a really basic system that we could do, actually, before we even start with the ancient cobblestone, um, we can set up a vanilla cobblestone generator using the importer right here. Because uh, up until now, we've been getting all of our cobblestone through the uh, Coblonia plants. And while it's a fairly easy way for us to get cobblestone, right now at least it's not a particularly automated way. Um, what we could do if we wanted to is we could set up a large uh, farm and then use item collectors to collect all of the cobblestone that grows uh, kind of fairly slowly from those Coblonia plants. Uh, again, they don't really grow that quick when you're not nearby and, and holding shift. Um, however, we can also very easily set up a kind of vanilla Minecraft cobblestone generator and then use the uh, world block importer to pick up all of the cobblestone. So if we make a standard Minecraft cobblestone generator like that with lava and flowing water, what we should be able to do is we should be able to put down the world block importer right about here. We're going to put down the logic cable onto the world block importer. Uh, once you put a cable down, you should then be able to right click on the uh, block importer here. And we get all of these options. Uh, for now, we're just going to stick with the pick up all item blocks. And that's basically going to tell this importer to pick up any block that is directly beneath it. From there, we can put down our basic draw right about here and then connect that up using the item interface. So the item interface is going to go right there, connecting up this draw here to this uh, world block importer. And so now in here, uh, the way that we tell it to use this option is simply by putting an empty variable card into that slot. And so now we have effectively created a cobblestone generator. And so anytime we need cobblestone, we can come over here and grab the cobblestone that is slowly but surely uh, going to build up in this basic drawer. I think it is smart enough to not break the cobblestone if it has nowhere to go. I don't think it's going to drop the cobblestone on the ground when this gets full. If it does, that's not the end of the world. We could put a, a void upgrade into here to delete excess cobblestone. But like I say, I think that's not going to be a problem for us. But uh, what we can do now if we want is we can take that cobblestone and we can use the world block exporter to place it down elsewhere and then use the hourglass of nostalgia to turn that cobblestone into ancient cobblestone at which point we could use something along the lines of i guess either another world block exporter um to, to pick up the cobblestone or to pick up the ancient cobblestone however i think it's going to be easier for us to use something like the uh, grit vase to pick up a larger area of ancient cobblestone and now to make this we do need onyx and scorched grit however we are a light on both of those so let's quickly grab a little bit extra so ideally if we did something for now let's say like this i might end up moving a lot of what we put here uh, because this area is not really great for the setup that we're trying to work with but just to kind of show uh, how this could work and uh, what we can do is we can uh, use a bit of fertilizer to increase the range of the grit base. Uh, so now it's going to mine anything in a three block radius around it kind of on this second level. So if you put a block here, it won't mine it. But if you put a block here, it should break it. So what we want to do here is we want to filter the grit base. And as it turns out, you can put a filter right there just on top. And oh, that will work, but only if we uh, filter quickly. So essentially what we want to do is we want to grab ancient cobblestone and we want to filter this grit vase to only break ancient cobblestone so if we do this and this okay i think what we have to do here actually i think we have to break the vase uh, what we can do if we do this and we do this and then we do this and then we give it the range yeah now it works okay so if you try and do it the other way around it's not going to work but if you put down the filter before you make it work then it will uh, it will filter correctly. So now this is only going to break ancient cobblestone. So what we can do from here is we can take our world block exporter and we can tell it to export blocks right here. So uh, for now, we'll go ahead and break this one just to kind of show how it works. We might need a little bit more logic cable here uh, because ideally we're going to connect this uh, pre-existing logic cable to the new uh, block exporter. Uh, so yeah, we're missing like two cable there, but that should not be, I don't think, too difficult for us to actually get so we'll connect those up like so and then in here we're going to do basically the exact same thing so this is a very simple network that only has access to the cobblestone so what we can do is we can just put the variable card here into the place all item blocks now if you had multiple different uh, storage drawers connected up to the item interface for example we could connect up the uh, world block exporter 
and the world block importer uh, to our system down there. And because we have that item interface on our controller, it would have access to all of our blocks, at which point you would have to use the uh, place item block, I believe, or maybe place block, but you could filter the block using the variable card. You'd have to use something like the logic programmer to program the variable card to a specific block. And at that point, you could tell it to only put down that specific block out of your system. For now though, given that we only have cobblestone connected, we can tell it to place down any blocks that it has access to because it only has access to the one block. So for now, place all blocks and that's go place down cobblestone from this drawer. From there, all we have to do is put down our hourglass of nostalgia and one, two, three. I do want to make sure it goes down high enough. So like right here to where it doesn't turn the base into ancient cobblestone because that is not what I want. But if we do something like this, uh, this is obviously not particularly efficient because it's going to take a while for this one bit of cobblestone here to be transformed with uh, this one hourglass of nostalgia. But what will happen is eventually this cobblestone will turn into ancient cobblestone. This ancient vase will brick it and we'll drop it out beneath it. And so to collect that, all we have to do is put a hopper underneath, much like we did with the mysterious dust. And we will have a very slow but very automated ancient cobblestone setup. So if we do, I think something just like this and like this, I think that should work. Now, when that cobblestone turns into ancient cobblestone, it should be dropped. It should be collected by the hopper. It should then make its way into the drawer. And so going forward, we should have an infinite amount of ancient cobblestone uh, being sent over to this basic drawer here, uh, which we can then use, of course, for making geodes and whatnot in the future. Uh, we could even look at, of course, automating the process of dropping uh, the ancient cobblestone into lava and then collecting the uh, the geodes that form as well. That shouldn't be too difficult for us to automate. But uh, for the most part, this is kind of just a proof of concept. I think what I might do between streams is I might look at getting a bunch more hourglasses of nostalgia as well as a bunch more uh, of these world block exporters so we can put down quite a large area of cobblestone and hopefully more quickly turn that cobblestone into ancient cobblestone uh, to get it a lot faster going forward. For now, though, we do have a couple of pieces of ancient cobblestone over here. So let's take a peek at uh, actually completing one of the quests in the quest book and seeing if we can't get our first pure daisy. So to make it, we do need the petal apothecary, which we do have. It's right here. Uh, we also need one gelatin, one ender lily twine, one sunflower, and one powdered chorus fruit, which you can make with regular chorus fruit and a drying agent. We did make the drying agent in the last stream. I believe we also made some gelatin. We did indeed. Perfect. And the lily twine we should have. We do. And then as for the sunflower, this is made in water with imprisoned light and one flower, which we can get with wheat and a drying agent. Good stuff. Uh, let's grab our imprisoned light. We do have 27 of them. And if we go ahead and drop both of those into a piece of water or into a puddle of water. Perfect. And that should basically be everything, I think. So the way that the petal apothecary works is you fill it with water, like so, and then you drop in the required items. So in this case, it is the sunflower, it is the powdered chorus fruit, it is the gelatin, and it is the ender lily twine. Once all of the items are in, you'll see the uh, recipe show up on screen there, and you'll see in the bottom right, it says plus a seed. And so all we have to do to finalize the creation of our first pure days uh, is grab one Minecraft seed, our stash of which is over here. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have to be a Minecraft seed. I think most uh, modded seeds do work as well. However, we do have uh, thousands of regular seeds, so we might as well use those. And there we go. We get a pure days. Nice. So with this guy, and I'm going to put this down further away from the nether portal because that sound is going to drive me crazy. Uh, but what we can do here is we can place this guy down and it will transform the blocks around it into other blocks. For example, the living rock is made with the ancient mossy cobblestone around the pure daisy. So let's go see if we can't grab eight mossy cobblestone here. It looks like we should have a fair bit. Yeah, we got a ton actually of uh, ancient mossy cobblestone now, which is perfect. Uh, and if we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, you don't have to put eight down. It will transform just one, but uh, of course eight is optimal. It's gonna transform all of these. I believe this normally takes about 60 seconds. It could have been tweaked for this pack, but I'd assume uh, it's going to take about a minute for those to transform into a living rock, um, at which point we could then look at getting uh, this guy over here, the Endo Flame. This is made with one fire diamond, which we've made before. It is uh, blaze rods and diamonds. 
one ember crystal, which we should have at least one of, I think, in the system, as well as two molasses. So the molasses is made by smelting raw sugar, which is made by combining sugarcane with a drying agent. Interesting. And it's also an interesting point because we can probably look now into fairly easily automating things like cactus and sugarcane. We could set up very simple uh, cactus and sugarcane farms where we just have like one bit of cactus, one bit of sugarcane and a, um, a block, you know, breaker like this that breaks the cactus or the sugarcane once it gets to, uh, to the second level. That might be something we look into to get like automated uh, cactus and sugar going forward. Uh, for now though, this is done. Let's grab that and quickly craft it up for the quest completion. Good stuff. Um, as a reward there, we do get 20 grass, which is not particularly useful, but I guess nice to have uh, none the less. And I guess before we can actually make this, we're going to have to get a mana spreader and a wand of the forest. I don't think that's strictly the case. I don't see anything in here that we currently can't make, but we will come back to that. I guess we'll do these quests first because it does show uh, requiring this quest to do it. So we do have two quests for two different saplings here. We have the Amethyst sampling and we have the uh, Tanzanite sampling. The Tanzanite sampling can be made in the Atomic Calculator with one large Tanzanite, one Atomic Binder, and one of any sapling. The large Tanzanite we might already have. I seem to remember doing this, although maybe we did use the uh, resultant crystal. Yeah, we have done it, but we did use the crystal for something else. That is fine. We should be able to make a new block of Lapis fairly easily here. And we'll just run that quickly through the atomic calculator. I think the, uh, oh, sorry, through the uh, algorithm separator. I think the hardest part of this sampling is going to be the atomic binder. Although this doesn't look too difficult, actually. You make it in sets of eight, and it is made with reinforced stone and enriched gold. Enriched gold being made in a regular calculator uh, with gold and redstone. So that actually seems pretty doable. So while we wait for that, let's grab one gold. And also let's throw some of this stuff away here back into our system. We don't need to be carrying around uh, all of this stuff at this moment in time. We can always come back for, uh, for certain bits as and when we need them. But uh, let's also grab one redstone. That should allow us to make the enriched redstone over in our calculator. Perfect. Uh, as far as reinforced stone goes, uh, we do have seven. And so getting ourselves uh, one of these atomic binders here really should not be a problem. And uh, we do also need that presumably for the amethyst sapling. Never mind, we totally don't. <laughs> <laughs> so ignore that chat. If we grab one sampling here and also go and grab our new uh, large tanzanite, I think that should be basically everything to make the sampling, right? And there we go. Perfect. Now, as for the amethyst sampling for this one, we need the scientific calculator and we need a large amethyst and again, any kind of sampling. Uh, the large amethyst can be made in the stone separator with the same block of lapis there. So that actually also seems uh, completely doable. Let's grab you and throw you in over here. Once both of those are made, we then need a pear sapling. It says use a sickle on the leaves of this tree once it fruits to harvest pears and rotten pears. Pears can be used as a food source, of course, and rotten pears can be used as slime balls. Ooh. And then after that, we're moving into the cherry wood sampling. Consider using the planks of this tree for decoration. To make this, we need a uh, apple powder and a pear. Apple powder we can, of course, make with apples, which I think we already have from our regular trees and a drying agent. But uh, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's grab our amethyst here and let's uh, grab our scientific calculator. I believe we were dividing the uh, amethyst by a regular sapling. Yeah, we totally were. Perfect. Uh, we'll claim our XP rewards. Uh, so the pear sapling is made with the amethyst sapling, the tanzanite sapling, and endstone. That seems extremely doable. Uh, we should still have some endstone left over from our end seed. We do indeed. Let's do you, you, and you. That gets us the pear sapling. And then from there, we can begin to grow the pear sapling on our fertile soil. While we wait for that to grow, let's go and check if we can't get a sickle. Ooh, I guess we're using the calculator sickle here. So we can make this with a reinforced shovel and a reinforced axe, both of which are made with sticks and a reinforced stone. Uh, that seems extremely doable. Uh, we are currently almost out of reinforced stone. We do have enough to make the, uh, the axe here. But we are going to need to get one more if we're going to make the shovel. That gets us the shovel. 
And if we combine both of those in our regular calculator, we got ourselves the sickle. Nice. So let me just check again. What did this say here? It said, uh, use a sickle on the leaves of this tree once it fruits to harvest pears. So it does specify once it fruits. I don't know if that means that we have to wait for fruits to appear or if that just means it's uh, like already we're good to go. I think we're already good to go because that did give me a pair. So let me uh, vein mine this. Okay, perfect. We've got 22 pairs and 27 rotten pairs there. And uh, that might have been actually like a big mistake <laughs> because now we didn't get any saplings from that. And therefore, if we want more pairs, we might have to get like another pear sapling. Which is less than ideal. But either way, we do now have the fruits. And uh, we should be able to uh, to move on from there. You can craft pears to get saplings. Oh, that is perfect. We totally can. We can craft together two pears and one sapling to get a, a pear sapling again. So getting another one going forward really shouldn't be a problem there. As for the cherry wood, we need the uh, the apple powder. So uh, let's go see if we don't have uh, one drying agent and two apples. It looks like we do. We totally do. Good stuff. And then, uh, yeah, we should be pretty much good to go there, right? If we do uh, this and this, that gets us our first cherry wood sapling, which uh, once again, we will go and plant over here. And uh, the book does recommend using this as uh, as decoration. Let's take a quick look at the... Uh, this is actually one that we can use to... Uh, we can just craft this. That's interesting. So it's the first log in the pack that we can just craft down uh, into cherry wood planks. We'll uh, definitely keep an eye on those going forward. Uh, but then now we get into the shimmering mushrooms. Flower petal? Never heard of it. So I think what this means is that the regular petals that you would normally use when playing with the Tanya are disabled. So I don't think you can get these. I think you instead have to use these uh, mushroom alternatives. So both of these are made in the exact same way. They're both made with mysterious dust, glowstone, mushrooms, and then either dandelion yellow or rose red. That doesn't seem too bad. Right now we don't have mushrooms, although much like with the vines earlier, uh, we can make those mushrooms utilizing our mutation paste. And the Twitch chat is telling me that I should uh, grow these mushrooms before I use them so we can uh, so we don't have to keep crafting more mushrooms in the future. So we'll plant down our mushroom here. And then I'm going to bone meal this mushroom, hopefully into a taller mushroom. So we'll go ahead and we'll tear this down. That's going to get us a total of 56 mushrooms, which is wonderful. And then from there, we should be able to, I think, fairly easily uh, make the mushrooms required for the uh, shimmering mushrooms here. So, like I said, I don't think we need both. How many uh, dandelion yellow do we have? 56. Let's go ahead and get three of you, and then let's see about making three of those. So, uh, yellow, shimmering mushroom is what we're after. Uh, to make it, we do need regular mushrooms. We'll put those in the system. One. Uh, I was going to say two and three, but we do not have the glowstone for it. Mm, that is actually fine because we do have a bunch of imprisoned light. For now, we'll go ahead and take uh, like half of that imprisoned light. Again, there is a 25% chance that you don't get glowstone from each one of these, but uh, on the whole, we got four. Ah, yikes. <laughs> four from 13 is not particularly great odds there, but it does get us uh, all of the glowstone required to make all of the mushrooms required here, uh, hopefully to complete this quest. Perfect. We will claim that. And then now, if we want to complete this quest, we need a mana spreader, which is going to use one of those mushrooms, as well as six living wood and one arcane gold ingot, which we can make with four charcoal, two arcane crystal dust, two of this dust, and uh, one gold ingot. That seems fairly doable. And then uh, on top of that, we also need the living wood, which is made from the cherry wood log. So that's why we need the cherry wood. Let me quickly grab uh, eight cherry wood here and we'll throw that down around our pure daisy that's going to slowly but surely uh, transform into living wood we do also need to get a wand of the forest this is made with three living wood twigs and two shimmering petals each living wood twig does require two living wood and so we are going to most certainly have to get more cherry wood here the eight that we're making uh, right now is not going to cut it because we need six for our mana spreader and then we need six more for the wand as well so there is our first batch of living wood. We'll take that and we'll put down the second uh, batch here. The six more there should be more than enough. Back over here, we'll probably start by making our 
a wand of the forest. So if we do one, two, three, and then we put those diagonally through the crafting station with two of these mushrooms. You can use any two colors here and they will reflect in the color of the wand. For now, this is going to be perfectly fine. The colors don't make a difference. They just change uh, the appearance of the wand. They don't actually change like the properties of the wand in any meaningful way. Um, but now, while we wait for our next batch of living wood, let's see if we can't get this uh, arcane gold ingot. So arcane dust wise, do we have any arcane crystals left over? The answer to that appears to be no. However, we can make more of them in our blood infuser using the electric diamonds, which of course made with fire diamonds, uh, which we should be able to get a few more of. I did also learn between streams that you can put in multiple of these uh, kind of upgrade promises. So you can have up to four of uh, each of the promise of velocity and promise of productivity. So if we wanted to, uh, we could make our uh, blood infuser there yet more efficient and yet faster uh, if we so wished. For now though, let me bookmark the old arcane gold here. We do get uh, two dust per arcane crystal. So if we do one of these and one of those, that gets us the two arcane dust. The gold we already have, the charcoal we might already have, we do, perfect. And so that just leaves us with this dust here, which is made with yet more arcane dust, a gas tier, prismarine, and bone meal. Interesting. So the gas tier we can make in the blood infuser with an ender tier, which we get from endermen. Do we have any ender tiers? We do. We have 28 of them from all those endermen that we uh, spawned in previously. So let's uh, go ahead and throw you in there. Let's go take a quick second while we wait for that. We also need prismarine crystals, which we should be able to get actually fairly easily uh, from our prismarine shards in our new mechanical squeezer. So we did make the prismarine burst seed, I believe in the last stream. And so we do have quite a bit of prismarine ready to go. And in fact, we already have one shard ready to go as well, which is perfect. Let's go and throw you in over here. That's gonna squeeze us a prismarine crystal. We'll also quickly crush down another one of these arcane crystals to get us yet more arcane dust and i think chat that we should be pretty much there we'll take our gas here we'll craft up the powder whose name i cannot pronounce like so and then from there that should be pretty much everything that we need in order to make the arcane gold and it is nice if we then go and grab our new living wood we can take that back over and we should have everything we need to make our very first mana spreader. Nice. So once again, I'll claim my rewards. There were up to 96 levels, which is, uh, which is quite high. Uh, but the next quest here now is the end of flame, which is going to allow us to actually start to generate mana. So like I said before, I don't think this is going to be too difficult, actually. Uh, we are going to have to get yet another fire diamond, and I have just kind of foolishly turned all of my fire diamonds uh, into electric diamonds, which is less than ideal, but getting more uh, blaze rods here should not be too difficult for us, and we can, of course, just whack one of those into our atomic uh, calculator with two diamonds to get us yet another fire diamond. Perfect. At that point, Let's see if we have any ember crystals left over. We totally do. Perfect. And let's also dump a few things out here. And then we just need the molasses. So how much sugarcane do we have? We have 12 sugarcane. That's not a tremendously large amount, but it should be enough to get the two raw sugar here, which we can then smelt over here into molasses. Once those are done, we should be pretty much good to go. We can get this party started by filling this guy up with water and throwing in both the ember crystal and the fire diamond. We'll also preemptively grab one wheat seed, which we're going to need at the end of the craft. Once the molasses is done, we'll go and throw both those in, drop in the seed, and there we go. We get our endo flame. Nice. Now that we have all of these items, we can actually begin to start generating some mana. So as per usual, the way this works, and we probably could do with setting up like a new Britannia area specifically for this, but for the time being, let's do something like this, something like this, and something like this. 
If you place down the mana spreader first, the end of flame should auto connect to the mana spreader. Whereas if you put down the end of flame first, you'll have to manually link the end of flame to the mana spreader. You can see if they're linked using the wand of the forest. Uh, right now, if I hover over the end of flame, you'll see it is linked uh, to that uh, mana spreader, which is why it's glowing uh, in different colors there. But uh, essentially, if we shift right click on the mana spreader and then shift right click on the mana pool, that's going to tell the mana spreader to send its mana at the mana pool. And essentially, what we can do here is we can use the end of flame to generate mana and we can use the mana spreader to move that mana from the end of flame over into the mana pool. At the end of flame, as mentioned in the Lexica Batania, which we did get previously, and for those who are unaware, this is just a uh, guidebook for Batania. And if we were to, for example, type in end of flame, uh, we'll see that the end of flame is a very rudimentary generating flower. It will consume any combustible, uh, any combustible items or blocks dropped in the nearby vicinity and burn through them to generate mana while the fuel lasts. So essentially, if we take something like charcoal here and we draw that down like so, the end of flame is going to suck that charcoal up, begin burning that charcoal, producing mana. That mana is then going to be taken by the mana spreader and get shot over into the mana pool. And going forward, we can use the mana in the mana pool to begin crafting different things. For example, the next quest that we're going to do at the start of the next stream wants us to craft five living rock with either a mana diamond or a mana pearl. And the mana pearl, for example, is made by throwing a chorus pearl into a mana pool with a tiny little a bit of mana. Uh, the chorus pearl made with the chorus suit and an ender pearl. But uh, going forward, there are items that we're going to have to craft in the mana pool. However, I think, chat, that is where we're going to go ahead and wrap things up for today. A little bit of a shorter stream, I do apologize. Um, however, between streams, I think I'll go ahead and probably make a few more Endo Flames because I think we're going to need a lot more of those uh, to get a decent amount of mana going. Um, like I said, I think I'll also probably look at uh, increasing the size of this Cobblestone setup as well to really start to get um, a lot more Ancient Cobblestone. I will quickly check to see if we got any Ancient Cobblestone. We totally did. How much do we have in here? We only have two, but of course right now uh, there's only one cobblestone being placed and there's also uh, only the one hourglass of nostalgia. I might end up making a few hourglasses uh, and even moving all the other ones that we have over to this setup to hopefully make it uh, much, much faster. Next time we'll come back, we'll look at getting the runic altar and maybe look at pushing through to the terrestrial agglomeration plate, which is going to allow us to get into terror steel and then uh, really kind of move towards the end of chapter four here, which uh, we might get to maybe sooner rather than later. We will see. For now though guys, thank you for watching.